Life is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we think about it. Humans are hardwired to be grateful. You can go back to prehistoric times and certainly to biblical times and you have evidence there of behavior that attests to gratitude. I feel I always did live a life of gratitude, but I was slapped in the face with it a little over two years ago when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I had such an aha moment when my doctor said, you're going to go through your chemo and some surgeries, but you're going to be fine. And as soon as she said that, I had this immediate understanding of, I don't have to get chemo. I get to get chemo. And then that just translated to, I don't have to go to work. I get to go to work because I have a job. I don't have to put gas in my car. I hate putting gas in my car. I get to put gas in my car. Did you have an aha moment such as that in your adult life? or? Well, it, was, uh, it wasn't so much of an aha moment as a slow progression towards the importance of it. I was studying depression in graduate school, um, and I was trying to understand a little bit more about what's happening in the brain of depression and what we can do about it. The more I read about it, the more I came to see that there is actual neuroscience that shows there are measurable changes in the brain activity in key brain regions or in spe specific neurochemicals that help our mood. If when I'm, when I'm focused on everything that's, that's going wrong, when I'm running late to a meeting and I, I hit a red light, I'm you know, really frustrated, but I, I just forgot to focus on, oh, the three green lights I just drove through that I didn't even realize. Because I think a lot of people suspect how powerful gratitude is and optimism and all these other positive emotions and they sort of don't trust their own instinctual perspective on it and they require a neuroscientist to come along and say yes this is this is real uh, this is a real phenomenon I also um, think that the layperson thinks that you have to, if you're not feeling grateful and you're n you're not living a daily life of gratitude that you need something to allow yourself to do that as an a pill yeah. or psychotherapy yeah. or whatever. And quite often it's like, just try it. Yeah. Just well, try being grateful. That, that reminds me of a, uh, of a story that happened to me when I was in Boy Scouts. And one day in camp, this old scout master, he went to go fishing. And I saw him come back a couple hours later and I asked him, oh, how was the fishing? And he said, oh, it was great. And I said, oh, so how many fish did you catch? And he said, oh, I didn't catch any. It's called fishing, not catching. A lot of times, it's not necessarily finding the particular thing in your life to be grateful for that's important. It's often just remembering to look in the first place because that starts to guide your focus towards the, the positive aspects in your life. So even if everything's not going great in your life, just remembering to focus on the positive aspects can be powerful. So, so how did gratitude come to be an important part of your life? I think even as a very young child, I was deeply religious and deeply aware of uh, um, God. And uh, I was raised Catholic and am Catholic. Um, and one of the fundamental teachings uh, that I I was um, that I embraced was that. Um, that to those who are given much, much is expected. And even when I had little, I assumed I had much and much was expected. I just remember when, uh, you know, going back through the whole breast cancer thing, and it was so clear to me that what I was going through was, okay, it was this part of my life, and then there's this, all this other stuff in my life. 
So why was I going to let this part of my life right. affect all this other stuff? Right. And, and uh, I'm reminded, as you were speaking, of um, a story about the Buddha. So uh, a woman who, was, who just lost her son, who was suffering the pain of that loss, went to the Buddha and asked, please, how can I be relieved of this suffering? And, and the Buddha said, well, I will help you. Uh, what you have to do is get a mandrake from someone who has not suffered. And as she went throughout the village from door to door, she realized that everyone has pain in, in their lives. Everyone is, is suffering. And that deep connection with other people's suffering uh, gave her comfort and healed her uh, from, from her own, own suffering. And... Uh, that solidarity was in some ways um, a way of being being grateful. We all have emotional brains, but the the set point of where that is differs between different people. Some people just they're naturally automatically seeing the good side, the positive side of things. My husband is half glass empty. I was born half glass full. Right. There's nothing wrong with negative emotions. I think one of the problems with a lot of advances in, in psychology and a lot of these this focus on gratitude, the dark side is that you should be happy all the time, that you should feel grateful no. all the time. And it sort of pathologizes no. these negative emotions. So yes, I do think people can train themselves perhaps to be more grateful and focus, but you don't need to change who you are, there's nothing wrong with who you are. One thing that's interesting about optimism, I think, because I've been studying depression for a long time, is that a lot of times people look at someone who's depressed and they're pessimistic and they say, man, just snap out of it. Like, stop being so pessimistic. Like, just look on the bright side. But what's interesting is that a lot of times the people who are, appear to be pessimists are really at heart very optimistic. People often turn to, turn to pessimism as a defense mechanism. She who expects nothing shall never be disappointed. But I, I happen to subscribe to she who expects something will get something. <laughs> you know, in my world, I have to simplify things so much um, for these young adults. I, I've got these names that are just scrolling through my mind right now who, who changed their lives literally that fast um, just them saying okay I'm gonna I'm gonna give happy a try <laughs> and it you know it's so simplistic but no. nothing bad's gonna come out of it the important thing is not necessarily that you expect that something good will happen right you just have to admit the possibility right, it's that the things openness. will be better right you just be open, open to the possibility that things are not going to be as terribly catastrophic as you're telling yourself right at the moment. So is gratitude a, a big part of, of most religions? Is, do all religions sort of share some aspect of that, or is it bigger in some than others? Gratitude manifests itself in prayers and actions. In, in the Jewish tradition, one is constantly um, making blessings uh, my favorite um, blessing is the Shehechianu, uh, the blessing uh, that is said when something special takes place or someone is experiencing something new. It's uh, a blessing uh, recognizing God as the Lord of the universe who has given us life, who has sustained us and brought us to this moment. Whenever we recognize God, through these blessings, we are mindful of, of uh, something greater than ourselves, our bounty. When we say grace before or after meals, it's recognizing that uh, we are blessed. The Psalms, written hundreds, thousands of years ago, but still uh, resonate for us, those songs of thanksgiving to to God for what we for what we have true gratitude comes from a place of humility and, and true gratitude comes from a place of recognizing the dark when you see how people suffer 
it makes one more more grateful. It's making me chuckle inside because when I got the, the dreaded call that you have cancer and I heard, whether you call it the universe or whatever, I call it God, I heard God say very clearly, be anxious for nothing and grateful for all things. By living that and, and being mindful and reinforcing that, because that was not natural for me to not be anxious, and following it up with and grateful for all things. There was no room left in my brain to be negative or pessimistic. Um, but through conscious intervention, a part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex, which is our frontest most part of the brain, I've conveniently gone bald right <laughs> above it. Uh, that's the part that's most uniquely human. We can start to intervene, and it takes a lot of energy at first. Uh, but as you as you start to do it more conscious energy, it starts to become more of an automatic. You have the ability uh, to start to change the activity and chemistry in key brain regions because our brains are plastic, like soft plastic. It can be molded into any shape that we want. And one of the things um, that people get wrong, I think, a lot of times is is that they, to change their old habits, they're focused, oh my God, this thing, I hate this thing about myself, I wanna change it. The problem with that is the more you are negatively focused, the right. more stressed out you are, the harder it is to actually change habits because right. the stress response actually makes us engage in our habits. So there's, this, there's a couple of research studies showing how self-affirmation, uh, drawing people's attention to their positive qualities actually makes it easier to change your negative qualities. Um, one of the most powerful ways that psychologists have devised to um, Im improve gratitude is something called a gratitude journal, which is that you have a ritual every evening or every morning when you wake up, just write down three things that you were grateful for about that day mm -hmm. or three things you're looking forward to or anything that you are feeling grateful for. And as soon as you start writing it down, your brain says, oh, this is, this is something I'm doing now. This is a goal I have. And as you start to set a goal and an intention, it actually changes which thoughts are more likely to bubble through the surface. Because guess what? You probably have 100 things to be grateful for that are floating through your head all the time. But only a couple of them bubble up through the level of consciousness to pay attention to. And as you make an intention to be more grateful, that just calls your attention to those thoughts that are already there. Imagine the world if we all just kind of took a conscious breath <laughs> and exhale together. How less frantic and less reactive we would all be. And even just taking that breath, I think that breath is a really simple way to experience gratitude. You want to be able to experience gratitude? Just don't breathe for five seconds, and then take a deep breath. That automatically gives you something right, to be you grateful focus for. Right, or you focus on, on the breathing. And, and that, with every breath, there is an opportunity to be grateful.